Have a great time tonight. It's the Who Done It musical by Candor and Ebb Curtains. Have a great evening. already a bullet smack dab in the middle of the bullseye. Why, he shot that bullet in half. No, not quite yet. <laughs> Why, he shot that bullet in half. <laughs> Look, it's Rob Hood. <laughs> Look, it's Rob Hood. <laughs> I wonder what face belongs to those lips I belong. This face. Why, you're Ellen O'Dell, that friendly lawman from the East I was so crazy about. I thought you were all done with us. Not when I finally found myself a home, a place where I belong, keep company with the people I care the most about. You came to us as a stranger, rid this place of crime, and gave us new hope in ourselves. That's going to be one tough act to follow. Well, how's this? Will you be my lawful wedded wife, Miss Nancy? Oh, yes, I will. <laughs>
places where the future waits for you and me. She's got a pulse. That's the first time she's ever kept the beat. Bobby, Randy, can you help carry her? Why not? I've been carrying her all night. Oh, my God. Holy mother in heaven. Aren't good? Well, what didn't they like? That we put on a show. Oh, the boss loved Oklahoma stay there as long as Rob Hood is running in Boston. Well, how about this? Calls to mind Walt Disney's Pinocchio because its star is wooden, ought to be hung by piano wire, and swallowed by the first whale that enters Boston Harbor. Who said that? The Christian Science Monitor. Oh, Carmen. You're the producer. I put a lot of money in this show. All the profits from my 1958 lingerie line. There's got to be something in the papers we can use. Well, let me consult with the writing team. Georgia, Aaron, does debacle have two meanings? No. no. Well, that's a shame. Critics! Who'd want to make a living killing other people's dreams? I mean, what kind of man would take a job like that? What kind of slob would take a job like that? Who could be mean enough, base and obscene enough, to take a job like that? Here's something in the Herald that might be good. A uh, formerly married composer and lyricist, Aaron Fox and Georgia Hendricks have provided film star Jessica Cranshaw with a star vehicle that ought to be driven off a cliff. What kind of mom would raise her boy like that? Who'd want her baby to destroy like that? Who could be jerk enough, hard up for work enough to want a job like that? Squeeze your nuts like that. Who could be prick enough, mentally sick enough? Who'd want to grow to be everyone's enemy? Critics are hated and so excoriated. Tell me what kind of man would want to do? Hey, 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 get a load of this. The, the Cambridge Patriot says, Considering the talent and experience of the veterans involved, Robin Hood is sure to be a huge Broadway smash. What kind of genius has a mind like that? So perspicacious, wise, and kind like that. Far from his mother's knee, she must be thrilled to see how he grew up to be such brilliant company. Refined and reflected, we're completely objected by the risk of your heart to meet a man. Well and good, but the uh, 
Cambridge Patriot is not the Boston Globe. The Globe is the review we needed. You know, it's funny, none of them mentioned Jessica fainting. Well, she fainted during the bows when the critics dash out of the theater to dash off their post-mortems. Mm. Face it, we've gotten our notices and we've been given notice. I'm afraid you're right. No, no. You two are just being overly sensitive because you wrote the show. This is only round one. When my husband and I first produced our, uh, our first musical, it was savaged out of town. But we rolled up our sleeves, did a major rewrite, and brought it to Broadway. And that musical, my friends, was Kiss Me, I'm Irish. <laughs> Closed before the audience even opened their playbills. But the point is, this is a Sidney and Carmen Bernstein production. We decide when it goes to, if it goes to New York, not Daryl Grady of the Boston Globe. So we're still shooting for Broadway? Georgia and Aaron, you keep writing tunes that bounce. And Oscar, you keep writing checks that don't. That's very nice. But until our leading lady is out of the hospital, who knows what happens next? Well, they just have her under observation. I'm sure she'll be out by the morning. Is there no limit? It sounds like our director. Is there no limit? He got such horrendous reviews. Is there no limit, I ask you, to my unbridled brilliance? Chris, where the hell were you tonight? I put a lot of money in this show. As our director, you owed it to oh, all of us be to be- Oh, still, your foolish mouth. Nothing to be gleaned at by watching one show in front of a fraudulent audience of an opening night. Went for a walk, past the Cathedral of the Holy Cross, went in, wildly spiritual. I tell you, those Catholics really know how to put on a show. And then right there, in the middle of the Eucharist, I had an epiphany. At this stage in any show, one must refrain from inventing anything brilliant, but one must simply eliminate all that is God-awful. And what, I ask you, without fear of contradiction, is the most God-awful thing about our show? Jessica. Jessica. Jessica, of course. Carla. I came back to convince you to get rid of our star only to have the cast inform me that she's already in the hospital. I see the hand of the Lord in this. Mrs. Bernstein, this is a phone call for you in your office. Thanks, Johnny. That's probably my husband calling. Where was Sydney tonight, Carmen? Sydney is in New York nailing a theater for us and, knowing my husband, also nailing a soprano who doesn't dance but knows how to move. <laughs> At least she could joke about it. <laughs> well, it's easy to joke about marriage when men like you and Sydney don't take it seriously. There's no comparison. I never did more than flirt with any woman in any cast once you and I got married. Barbara O'Brien. She was an usher and it was only after you moved out. Oh, so you finally looked up from your music and noticed I was gone. Johnny, you're the stage manager. How are the cast taking the reviews? They decided to dress to the nines and throw a combination opening and closing night party. Oy. Defeatest a lot of you. And you've yet to hear my plan of action. And hear it ye shall. Johnny. Help me watch you move a piano. What, what plan? You think he wants us to go to Broadway using an understudy? Well, at least we'll still have Bobby in the title role. Oh, well, that's all that matters, right? I mean, the only reason you teamed up with me again was to rekindle a romance with our leading man. Aaron, when I signed on, I had no idea Bobby was in this show. Really? Then why at our very first rehearsal did you walk right up to him and say... Hi, Bobby. Hi, sweetie. Well, looks like we're all gonna be heading back to New York a little sooner than we thought. But if you and I are going back together, this is one flop that's a big hit with me. Aviane, mes enfants. A brief demonstration about what's been wrong with our show right from the very first love song. Do you mean thinking of him? That's one of my best songs in the show. One of our best songs. See, Georgia agrees. Nonetheless, I've had a problem with this since our first day of rehearsal. Georgia. Sing our leading lady's opening number. What, what song is this? Uh, the one with the new lyric Georgia wrote about me. About <laughs> Rob Hood. Precisely. Aaron, play. Georgia, sing. Johnny, put her in light Q5. Light Q5? This is ridiculous. I haven't sung on a stage in years. Just sing. Of him, 
thinking of him. Sometimes it seems I spend every moment of my waking day thinking of him, making him laugh, sometimes making him strong, sometimes making him feel some place in the light is his, telling him just how special he is, thinking of him, thinking of him, telling the truth when nobody's willing to tell him the truth, fighting for him. Gee, I finally hear how that song was meant to go. Chris, if you say something's been wrong with that tune since our first rehearsal, you'll have to tell me what. It's that we ever allowed Jessica Cranshaw to sing it. Mm. Now, people, I think it's a damn shame that our leading lady collapsed during tonight's performance. She might have done it weeks ago and saved us a month of misery. But the cavity that Jessica has created must be appropriately filled. Excuse me, may I speak? As Jessica's understudy, I would feel terrible about taking over in these no circumstances. No need to feel terrible, Nikki. But no need, because you're still the understudy. To Georgia. Georgia? Well, that's that's the the word. Word. That I don't know. You know the score and the script better than anyone. You sing the songs from the heart because that's where the words come from. I realize it's been quite some time since you traded in your tap shoes for a rhyming dictionary. Excuse but me. Excuse me. But speaking for those of us in the chorus, I really think Nikki should get the role. She's talented and dedicated. And, and since she... you're her understudy, if she gets the lead, you get her part? Oh, well, yes, that too. Nice try, Bambi. But either George is in or I'm out. What do you say, Oscar? Chris, I'll put my money where your mouth is. Longer at first. Aaron, I assume this move more than meets your approval? Uh, honestly, it doesn't. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I have my reasons. You always have. Besides, this debate is pointless if Jessica shows up tomorrow. And God help us, her performance was worse than ever this evening. Jessica Cranshaw will never be better than she was this evening. She was horrible. I know, but she'll never be better. She's dead. Dead? That was the hospital on the phone. In terms of future performances, Jessica Crenshaw now has a conflict. What happened? They wouldn't tell me. Chris, would you like to say something to the company about Jessica? Well, shall we observe a minute of silence to match the audience responses to Jessica's first number? Chris. <laughs> well, all right. Let's all form a semicircle. Boy, girl, boy, girl. Toast on the inside. No, Bambi, you're blocking the entire right side of the house. <clears throat> now, people, Jessica was part of our company, and now we must part company. I know she'll be remembered in our thoughts and in our resumes. And as thespians, I know you like to display your sorrow as both a tribute and as an acting exercise. Sasha, F sharp minor. Woman's dead. Would someone care 
Chaffee of the Greater Boston Police. Uh, I've been assigned to the Homicide Division, and I, uh... Can I just say it is an honor to be on the same stage with each and every one of you? Yes! 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 Sorry, sorry if I'm interrupting a rehearsal, but... Uh, let me assure you, I do not want my own work here to interfere with your production from reaching its home on Broadway, which it generally deserves. I, uh, I happen to catch Robin Hood in previews, and, and may I say that, with the exception of the deceased Miss Cranshaw, you're all such wonderful performers, and what a great score. Oh, I appreciate that very much, Lieutenant. And on behalf of my half of that compliment, thanks as well. Oh, you are more than welcome. I, you know, I... Uh, did a little community theater myself. Oh, oh not nothing fancy, although my Billy Bigelow at the Brookline Barnhouse got favorable reviews. And in Midsummer's Night Dream, my bottom was very well received. <laughs> oh, wait a moment. Did you. Did you say you're from homicide? Uh, yes. Uh, based on a preliminary autopsy, it's clear that Jessica Cranshaw was murdered. Burton. And, oh and what are they going to do with a killer? I mean, does he get a trophy or a Pontiac convertible? Chris! <laughs> Sorry, reflex. W what killed her? Hydrocyanic acid, commonly used in electroplating, as well as the gas chambers in San Quentin. <laughs> it was in capsule form, which is why nobody realized that she had been poisoned until the capsules had a chance to uh, dissolve, starting their own personal gas chamber internally. That's horrible. <laughs> Tracing back from when the capsules dissolved, we know that she took them in the final minutes of this evening's production. Couldn't she have poisoned herself? Trauma to the back of the throat suggests she didn't take them voluntarily. Now, uh, may I ask who, who's in charge here, uh, other than myself? <laughs> Permit me, Lieutenant. I am the critically acclaimed director, Christopher Belling, and I'll be blocking your investigation. Well, I hope that's not the case. <laughs> but if you gotta finish up with your cast, please go right ahead. <laughs> Yes, well, I know you'll give Georgia her support as she steps into the late Miss Cranshaw's shoes. My God, that's brilliant! As one would expect from me. Now, all those ready to push forward with Robin Hood and Georgia, give me a show of hands. That's it? Listen, people, uh, uh, life is full of setbacks and disappointments as my husband first demonstrated in the bridal suite at the Hotel Taft. But with Georgia stepping in as the lead, we've got ourselves a real shot! This show is going on! What do you say, gang? Are you with me? You know, if we leave now, we can make the last train back to New York. No, I don't think that's an idea. Stop! It's clear 
that every one of you is in perfect physical condition. So the show must go on. Why? Because, as old as time itself, there's a grand theatrical tradition that the show must go on. Forget it. I've got a contract. You signed a contract. Go read your contract. And then I'll count to ten. And then I'll sue you. Oh, yes, I'll sue you. And when I sue you, you'll never work again. Okay, no, she, she can't do that, right, John? Hey, so who's the equity representative? I am. Mrs. Bernstein, as equity deputy, I must warn you that any further threats and you'll be brought up on charges. Oh, shut up, Elaine. The name is Bambi. Mother. All right. Let's put it this way. For the backer's sake, I'm asking your permission to let the show go on. No. The show must go on. Not a chance. The show must go on. Why? Because I say the show must go on. Horseshit. I can't believe I'm hearing this. I, I won't believe it. Putting on a musical has got to be the most fulfilling thing a person could ever hope to do. You, you people, you're... You're all heroes to me. You're a special kind of people known as show people who live in a world of your own. The audience pay plenty to sit there and clap, hearing you sing, watching you tap. Did you know your dentist wants to be in show business? Your window washer wants to be a star. And though my analyst may never couch it that way. Analyst, couch! <laughs> you don't know how lucky you are. Some policemen and detectives dream of show business. They can't get arrested, but still. They sit around the station and fancy the lights. They cheer Sherlock Holmes and cheer Mac the Knight. Ask your cleaning lady, don't you dream of show business to vocalize or stretch beside a bar. Her affirmative shrug as she shampoos your rug lets you know how lucky you are. There's a special kind of aura around a show person. Just ask the next waiter you meet. Walk in fifth position, his voice is just grand. He gives you the check, you give him a hand. If the boys in ballet parking turn to show business, they can scalp a higher ticket for your car. My tree surgeon now started taking a bow, a bow, get it, B-O-U-G-A, you don't, don't know, know how lucky you are. They're a special kind of people known as show people, we live in a world of our own. Our days are tied to curtains, they rise and they fall, we're born every night at half hour call. Picture being anything but show people civilian times the whole thing quite bizarre. But that hop in our hearts when the overture starts helps us know how lucky we are. Show people!
And listen, 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 folks. Robin Hood really should go on. Excuse me, Lieutenant, may I speak to you? My name is Nikki Harris. You're Miss Nikki Harris. Oh, I read your bio several times through on the bus ride home the other evening. May I say, I, I found your performance particularly memorable. It was just lovely. Well, thank you. Just lovely. Well, thank you. And, I, and, I, and I'm just crazy about your little uh, vibrato. Oh, oh, you're very kind. Oh, sorry. Anyway. Yesterday, Miss Cranshaw asked me to help her go over her lines, and of course I said I'd be glad to help. Oh, that's just like you. Well, I'm also her understudy. Oh. At least, I was. I guess I'm George's now. <laughs> anyway, these notes fell out of her script. Now, she didn't think much of them, but I kept them. I'm afraid my fingerprints are all over them. <laughs> They're death threats! You see how the letters and the words have been cut out with little curved finger scissors as if from a magazine or a newspaper? At least I, I would imagine. You're murdering the score, but I'll murder you. You'll drop before the curtain does. If you don't quit, you'll die legit. Arise. <laughs> can you tell anything from them? Uh, well, uh, they seem pretty negative in spirit. Well, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, I get it. You, uh, you were hoping for the Arthur Conan Doyle version? <laughs> Oh. I'm sorry, these, these notes reveal very little, oh. except for the person who wrote them is a man six foot four in height, 32 years of age, served in the Merchant Marines, wears a pewter ring, and despite being right-handed, is known by his left friends as Lefty. Oh. <laughs> How did you know that? I don't. <laughs> I was just saying you probably hoped I could tell by reading. I'd, wow. If I could tell that just by looking at the... I mean, really, wow. <laughs> Gee, for a second, I was impressed, as I once told my husband at the Hotel Taft. Well, what do you say we all go across the street and have ourselves one slobber knocker of a week for the late, if less than great, Jessica Cranshaw? Drinks are on me! Yeah, yeah. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Look, folks, folks, I'm sorry. No, no, uh, there's guards at all the exits, and uh, none of you can leave. <laughs> No, 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 I, I'm sorry. The entire company and crew will be living right here until further notice. Emergency services will bring in carts and meals. Wait a second. The talented members of this cast are entitled to a day off. The talented members, yes. And even you, Elaine. Uh, listen, li listen, folks. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but to the best of my recollection, Jessica Cranshaw never left the stage during the show's final ten minutes. I mean, if that's the case, I'm sorry, but she had to be murdered by one of you. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, and I've never had so many suspects, and I can't have each one of you followed around the clock, so it's best to have you locked up on the key until I can solve this crime. You are taking the law into your own hands, Chuffy. That's what I get paid to do. That's why I get a badge and my own gun. <laughs> Besides being sequestered here, folks, we'll give you a chance to work on fixing the show. Fixing? Keep your goddamn hands off me, you hear? Who's that? Oh, that sounds like it's probably my husband on his best behavior. I guess he left New York. Lucky New York. Ain't this just peachy keen? You all wait enough for me. I said, hey, Mr. Bernstein. Johnny, I'm still wearing my coat. Sorry, Miss Bernstein. Sydney? It's been a god-awful night. I hear you, Chris. And I'm handing in my resignation. I can't hear you, Chris. How you holding up, Oscar? Oh, well, can't complain. That's right. You can't. Welcome back to Boston, Sydney. Well, hello. Uh, it's me, Sydney, your stepdaughter. Oh, sorry about that, uh, on? It's Bambi. Oh. And last of the least, Mrs. B, my junior partner and lesser half. Well, Sydney, <laughs> let's get this over with. What? Do you expect me to be upset? I left you in charge of opening night and returned to find a murdered leading lady, deadly reviews, and a bunch of cops who tell me I can't leave the theater. 
Looks like you arrived at just the wrong time for you and just the right time for me, Mr. Bernstein. Excuse me? Uh, Lieutenant Frank Chaffee, homicide. Now, now listen, folks. You should all go about your various tasks as if this weren't the scene of a homicide, okay? Detective McNichol will be waiting downstairs for all your pertinent information. I'd like each one of you to give him your name, your address, uh, an 8x10 glossy, and I'll speak with each one of you in the morning. Good night, folks. Thank you. Lieutenant. I can't be a suspect. I was in Manhattan when Jessica was murdered. Well, can you prove that? Uh, well, it so happens I was uh, keeping company with a young actress I've been uh, <laughs> keeping on Sutton Place. If I gave you her name, it could uh, ruin her reputation. Huh? <laughs> well, your chivalry is touchingly convenient. Lieutenant. I had many influential friends in New York City. Well, it's too bad you're in Boston. <laughs> Lieutenant, will you be needing me any further? Oh, no, miss. Oh, oh but uh, uh, I, I do have some questions for your boyfriend. Oh, I don't have a boyfriend. Well, in, in that case then, Miss Harris, I, I, I'd like to take you into my confidence regarding this investigation. Why is that, Lieutenant? Because if I don't, there's really no need for us to keep talking. <laughs> oh, well, in that case, take me into your confidence with confidence, Lieutenant. Good. <laughs> you know, something seems very wrong here. I, I just met an opening night cast that seems very eager to close. Well, I, I can understand how they might feel. They all gave up wonderful jobs and hit Broadway shows to work up here in Boston. I I've never worked outside of the city before. And Bambi's had to fight her mother at every step just to be in the chorus, but... The rest of the cast are underpaid and overworked, though surely not enough to commit murder. Keep in mind, I could be within an arm's reach at any hour, day or night. You think I'm in some kind of danger? No, 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 no. That was a completely unrelated thought. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> but you live with danger on a daily basis, don't you, Lieutenant? Oh, most of the time it's just paperwork and procedure. Have a seat. <laughs> Detectives have no opening night, Miss Harris. We. We make our curtain entrance after the curtain's fallen on someone else's life. <laughs> but it's, it's like a calling, isn't it? Like a doctor or a teacher. Or a lawyer, <laughs> an actor. <laughs> well, well, that's true, I guess. <laughs> I can't imagine doing anything else with my life. It's not wrong to be married to one's work, is it? No. No, not at all. <laughs> Sometimes it's no honeymoon. Oh. <laughs> uh, I love my job. I really do. And if I say so myself, I'm good at it, too. I catch the bad guys, well, most of the time. So it's a good life, a perfectly good life, not exactly sublime. When I finish my work and I crawl into bed, I reflect as I turn out the lights that the day that's to come and the week that's ahead will be lunch counter morning and coffee shop nights. Lunch counter mornings and coffee shop nights. But it's wonderful to have such a dependable schedule, like matinees every Wednesday. A brisket and broad beans each Thursday. With your friends. With my, yeah, well, I like my pals, the guys on the force. We're not very social. They're all married, of course. <laughs> Sometimes we go bowling or have a few beers. So it's a fine life, a perfectly fine life. I give it two cheers. <laughs> Cause sometimes I think at the end of the day when I've read the last burglar his rights that the day that's to come is a little bit gray with its lunch counter mornings and coffee shop nights. Lunch counter mornings and coffee shop nights. But your acting roles, don't they make for a change? Oh, Miss Harris, each year from May 23rd to the 12th of June when I turn my life over to the Swallow Street players, oh, it's more than a vacation to me. It's, a, it's an overture of hope. The curtain rising on the greatest joy of my life. But the rest of the year, the life that I lead, it's a little bit gray. 
there are plenty of low days and not many highs. Mostly lunch counter mornings and coffee shop nights. I, uh, I don't mean to seem forward, but uh, might I walk you home? Oh, I'd be delighted. Except you said we're not allowed to leave. with me, but I can't do this. Honey, I've seen you do this. Yeah, in a previous life. Was somebody like me to try? I, I promise, they'll adore you almost as much as I do. I can go right from a grand jeté into a split. You're looking just great. Impossible, I know, but somehow I just do it. If one of you is the killer, would you please take her next? <laughs> Folks, Detective O'Farrell is here with the last delivery of clothes from your hotel rooms. Claim your bundle downstairs, and in one half hour, Lieutenant Chaffee will begin questioning altos and tenors. Hi, folks. How's the rehearsal? Going well? Everything's going well. Ah, hey, Lieutenant. Oh. Rising from the interrogation chamber to oh. grace us with your presence? I had to stretch my legs. I've been stuck in that green room all morning. At least you got to sleep in your own bed last night. Yeah, sorry about that. I, um... I intrigue you, don't I, Lieutenant? Oh, yes, Mr. Belling. As both a director and a suspect. <laughs> oh, all right. Good, 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 good. I uh, got what you asked for. Great, great, great. Uh, did you get the clothes I asked for for Nikki Harris? Losing greens, just like you asked for. Oh, perfect. Let me ask you, were you uh, trying to set some kind of a trap for her? Or... No, I'm trying to match the color of her eyes. Heads up! I'm moving the wagon. Excuse me. Excuse me! Uh, Lieutenant Frank Chaffee, homicide. Mind telling me who you are and uh, how you got in here? As a member of the press, I'm exempt from your quarantine, Lieutenant. Daryl Grady of the Boston Globe. After the review you gave Robin Hood? <laughs> I can't imagine why you'd show your face here of all places. I'm as mystified as you. The show's producers called and asked me to pay a visit. What? That's right. Carmen Bernstein, Mr. Grady, you have our thanks for coming by, if not for your review. Listen, I tried my level best to say something good about the production. Oh. I praised the choreography and that young woman who played the school mom. What's her name? Nikki? Harris. Yes. Well, that's all history now. My condolences on the loss of your star and your show. When you interviewed me last week, I told you that we're going to Broadway no matter what you wrote. We are not closing Robin Hood. Once we've ironed out the kinks, we're going to ask you to review it again, only this time with Georgia Hendricks in the lead. Georgia Hendricks? Mm -hmm. Your assist? Mm -hmm. She hasn't been in a show for years. That's some news. And yes, there is precedent for reappraising a show with a new lead. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll re-review your show tomorrow night. Tomorrow? What's the best I can do? And to be fair, keep in mind, not many shows can survive two bad reviews from the Globe in one week. Carmen, go tell the cast we got 24 hours to do a week's of rehearsal. And if we fail, You'll live to regret it. You know, Sydney, I think the reason you're such a low life is because they built you so close to the ground. <laughs> oh, good day, Lieutenant. Oh, you just made it one, Miss Harris. Oh, that dress goes very nicely with your eyes, Nikki. Thank you. Oh, and I can't believe it. Mr. Darrell Grady, am I allowed to offer my thanks for the kind words you wrote? 
Please don't misunderstand, Miss Harris, but I try not to fraternize with the artists I review, but let me say, you did stand out in what was otherwise an abundantly misguided production. <laughs> Mr. Grady, I think your review of Robin Hood was needlessly cruel and way off the mark. Well, I'm not sure you know how to judge acting, Lieutenant. Oh, of course. I mean, you're the expert. <laughs> but now I regret to inform you that I'm placing you under arrest for the suspicion of murder. What? You lost your mind? Any statement you make can be taken down in writing and used against you in a court of law. This is insane. What in God's name are you saying? From saying my best lines from Agatha Christie's Murder in the Vicarage. I played Chief Inspector Slack two summers ago at the Natick Town Players. Oh. Did you think I was saying that for real? Gosh, Mr. Grady. I'm not sure you know how to judge acting. <laughs> you can go. Come on, Grady. I'll walk you to the door. was swell acting, Lieutenant. And not just on a community theater level. I mean college. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How is the investigation coming along, may I ask? You know, I, I've been going over the show's financial records. And you were right. Everybody here is working for the same equity minimum. Not just the newcomers like you and Bambi, but, but the stars as well. You know, this, this is really no place for us to talk. Why don't you and me get out of here for a you little... You won't let me leave. Oh, damn. Lieutenant, you must clear the stage immediately. I've just been informed that I have less time to reinvent this show than Moses had to cross the Red Sea. And he had God on his side. Hey, is this true? I I'm getting reviewed tomorrow? Mickey, go fetch Bambi. I have to re-block in the same boat here and now. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna have to watch this. Why, you think something's gonna happen? <laughs> no. I just really like the number. <laughs> uh, although... What? No, never mind. I, no, it's... But... What? Oh, I can't believe I'm going to say this. And shoot me with my own gun if I'm way out of line here. But, but what uh, is it? Well, I don't think changing the choreography is going to help. The song itself is sort of lackluster. It lacks... Yes? Luster. <laughs> Three women on an Arkansas river in a rowboat that's sinking fast trying to get to the federal courthouse before the farmers lose the land. That is great stuff. Wow! It's your 11 o'clock number, but the song itself is sort of... I got you. Could I hear a little bit of it? Hey, Sasha! And ladies, sing for the lieutenant, would you? All right, here you go, Shafi, just for you. Thank you. In the same boat, on the same sea, shaking inside as the tide keeps rising. Marry a ship, marry a sail, marry a soul on the whole horizon. Still, we are not discouraged due to the ancient book that you're likely to win. Take it all on the chin when you're in the same boat. You see what I mean? For such a big moment in the show, the song itself is sort of mild-mannered. Strangely enough, I agree. We need a completely new composition, something that's catchier than pink eyes. So you want a hit? Yes, Aaron, and not some song from one of your failed shows either. Not your Eine Kleine Trunk music. Well, Chris, if you want me to come up with anything, you have to give me some private time with my piano and my writing partner. Your writing partner is also my dancing partner and the star of this show. Look, look if she doesn't get the saloon number under her belt tonight, we're all finished. And I need to see that very number in full dress regalia this instant. Johnny, tell the cast to change to the act one finale from the final bars at the bar in the Bar B Bar Saloon. Say again. I can't say that again. Uh, listen, listen, folks. Mr. Belling's rehearsal takes priority, so if you need to change costumes, please go right ahead. The rest of you, please head down to the green room where Detective O'Farrell will be fingerprinting the entire company. Oh, Frank, do you think that's Well, that's one of you be kind enough to tell me why you committed murder. So, let's clear the stage and give our composer the solitude he needs. Thank you. Yes. I should give you a few moments alone with your piano, Mr. Fox. <laughs> alone? Yeah. I imagine it must be rather difficult to create while your partner is... Uh... Otherwise engaged? Yeah. May I ask? Only because I've wondered this my entire life. Which would normally come first, the, the music or the lyric? Same answer as chicken or the egg. 
So it's a lyric. I knew it. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> not all great melodies need a lyric or a lyricist. Well, then how do you start? Well, it can start with a note, which can turn into a phrase. And then you hang words on each branch, like trimming a tree. Well, that sounds easy enough. Really? Well, don't talk about love. Or you'll have to say, fits like a glove. Or as certain as push comes to shove. You will pine for the woman you're constantly thinking of. See the problem? Dangling participle. <laughs> so you're suggesting staying away from love? Oh, at all costs. And don't mention your life. Or you'll have to say, cuts like a knife. Or refer to the heartbreak and strife. When you find that you're missing your... Missing? Uh, what? Uh, you were saying what you miss. Oh, uh... Well, I miss the music, I miss the song, since she's not with me. But if you ask me what I prefer, I'd say the music I wrote with her. When you're writing a song and you've a partner, the room is filled with jokes and chatter. She says something, you say something. She writes a line, you play a vamp. But when you're writing a song without a partner, it's a completely different matter. No one tells you that's not funny. No one says let's cut that bar. No one makes you than you are I can't pretend I miss the music I miss my friend No need to ask me what I prefer Sorry, am I interrupting? Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm afraid I'm the guilty party there. <laughs> Miss Fox, thank you for all your insight. And Miss Hendricks, good luck on the upcoming number. <laughs> I'll uh, speak with you later. I forgot my lyric. Can you believe it? <sighs> Me. <laughs> well, you're not the lyricist anymore. You're the star. How does it feel being back on the boards? It's terrifying. Thrilling. I miss uh -huh. the stage. Yeah. Come on, Angel. We gotta do that away right away. <laughs> Must we? It's our last chance to land the number before we pack it in for the night. Here we go, honey. <clears throat> oh. 
Oh, Aaron, um, I'm starting to think you were right when you said I was wrong for this. Uh, Georgia, break a leg. Thanks. You can finish the song without me? I'm a one-man band. These here parts for Miss Nancy, the new school mom. Alan O'Dell. Ain't it funny how a cowardly lawman from back east knows so much about the man I plan to brand? I'm gonna round up that Rob Hood and hog tie his fancy Miss Nancy. He made a getaway. He left me flat away. At times like this, a modern miss should gallop that away. When love goes this way, don't blow your bliss away. You might find out he's just about a hug and kiss away. No matter which way, he takes that bitch away. I won't relent till he'll consent to make a switch away. If he's in Santa Fe,
Just wait and see, I guarantee your man won't slip away. If you're the mate for him, don't sit and wait for him. It's up to you, but if you do, you'll be too late for him. If there's a spat away, don't throw his hat away. Forget that fight and hold him tight till he gets that away. dynamic and uplifting, leaving the audience chomping at the bits for act two in. And that's set. Who doesn't love Fred? Huh? <laughs> yes, very good. And now since we're all in our positions, let's set the pose for the uh, final... Sorry, 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 Chris. If I may, I'm sorry. But uh, uh, listen, folks, I've had a chance to speak with each one of you. And gosh, you seem like such a terrific bunch of people. But look, I'm afraid this briefcase contains some very compromising evidence. I turned them about one of you and... Now, I don't want to point fingers, but I've got more Lieutenant, questions here for the... urgent phone call from headquarters. What now? Oh, Chris, just, just continue with what you were doing. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Yes, so, as I was saying, I want to set the pose for the final curtain. So, if you'll all just... <laughs> Lights! Just as I thought. As you were. Looks like everybody but Nikki's got something to hide. There's nothing in the briefcase, folks, except a container of charter from the Union Esther House. Bus is Manhattan? Yeah. You want it? Oh, yeah. Oh, here you go. So, like I was saying, I had a chance to speak with each one of you, made a few phone calls. And what do I come up with? 
a murder victim named Jessica Cranshaw working for a fraction of a usual firm's salary. A distinguished director who despises the late Miss Cranshaw gets slaves to make this show work all the same. A dancer, choreographer, who gives up a chance to work for Balance Sheet to put on a song and dance for spare change. <laughs> Ex-partners in marriage and music who inexplicably reunite although they no longer work in harmony together. A one-man bank named Oscar Shapiro who despite having no prior interest in theater suddenly sinks one payment after another into this musical. And finally, a cast that celebrates when their show is torn to shreds by critics because it means that at last they are long free to gain better jobs back on Broadway. So, what does all this tell me? But Sid Bernstein was blackmailing every one of you into doing this show. Even you dancers. Okay, so when I was starting out, I gave Sid Bernstein private audition that I hoped would stay private. But what about you chorus boys? Gosh, you, you seem like such clean-cut fellas. What could you possibly have done that you wouldn't want the folks back home to know? <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant, I have to think that most people have something about themselves that they like to keep to themselves. Agreed. Well, listen, folks, huh? I'm not here to uncover your deep, dark secrets. Just the one that caused someone to murder Jessica Cranshaw. Excuse me. I'm, I'm so sorry. I had no idea that Sidney was doing this to get you all to work so cheap. He was in charge of the negotiations. Well, he won't be able to deal his way out of breaking the law. Look, ladies and gentlemen, you may have been blackmailed into doing the show, but you will not be blackmailed anymore. However, you are still all murder suspects. Now, get back to work. You may have joined this show for the wrong reason, but you are going to continue because you have a contract. Damn straight. And because Oscar deserves a return for his investment. Well, thank you. And because for me to solve this crime, the best way is to keep the heat turned up on this pressure cooker of a theater until I can solve this crime. Take it away, Chris. Yes, oh, very well. So, as I was saying, I Heads want up, to... we're striking the set. What? No, Johnny, I have yet to fix the pose. Sorry. But never mind. Let's have the final four bars. Bobby! Five, six, seven, eight! I'm heading that way! Why? Why isn't the curtain closing? We're having a little trouble with this. I want it closed now. All right. How's this? Did you see something going up as the curtain was closing? Oh my God, Johnny, open the curtain, quick. Curtain! Johnny, don't close that curtain. Curtain! No. Open the curtain! Curtain! Oh, oh my God, it's I think we fixed the curtain. I think you better make it a blackout. <laughs> <laughs>